Spitting out of Civil War, we got something called the Initiative. And the Initiative was a banner uh, that were going on a lot of books. It kind of reflected this new status quo of how characters are going to interact and engage. And this, this hit uh, the Thunderbolts. It hit a bunch of existing books. Uh, but it also hit the, uh, this new title, which was Avengers Initiative. And the idea here was that they were going to take kind of, uh, you know, new team members, new heroes, people who now had to register existing teams, and they were going to create a 50 state initiative where uh, these, these characters were going to uh, basically help police the, the, you know, the U.S. Uh, in a more, op you know, guided way. So let's get into it. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, going through every Avengers number one, every Avengers relaunch, and we hit the initiative. And this is an interesting book uh, written by Dan Slott, Stefano Caselli on art. Um, this was an ambitious book because the, the premise here is that you've got superheroes all over the country, tons of them everywhere, and they're going to get organized into kind of training and camps through the Pro Registration Act. The things like the new Avengers were, were outlaws at the time, people like Luke Cage. Uh, and Spider-Man was having to, um, you know, run against the law. But these were the government-sanctioned, we're going to make them great heroes uh, plan. And so it was an opportunity to not only catch up on some B heroes, C heroes, people you hadn't really seen before and give them a time to shine in the spotlight, but also a chance to uh, bring in some new characters that, that we hadn't seen. Now, the backdrop of all this, of course, is that uh, the secret invasion is looming, so some of these characters are not who they say they are, that there are scrolls in the mix, and, um, and also that it was going to be very, very dangerous. But um, this, is, uh, it, it, this book was aimed at a different audience. It's not a core Avengers audience. It was really like a kind of a, a Young Avengers type before Young Avengers happened. Uh, it, was, it was designed to put the spotlight on some new people and build up some new IP. Uh, what's interesting as you go through this is there was a lot of really good characterization done by Dan Slott that, you know, in you know, five years later, these characters are largely, you know, vanish, uh, disappear. Um, many of them were just murdered off in Avengers Arena, which we'll get to for, for no apparent reason. But um, you see some real care in building these characters. So we get to the issue kicking right off, uh, right in the heart of the action. It's uh, uh, Gauntlet, the Gauntlet uh, in Baghdad. And he is working with the troops in a military operation to uh, basically, you know, to help America and, and defend people, you know, from the military side of the world, which was a nice way to look at it. But he's recruited by uh, uh, Harvey, <laughs> uh, Secretary, uh, uh, I've never, you know what, all these years, Guy Grinch, Grinch. I, I, I've never been completely 100% sure how to pronounce his name. Anyway, he's recruited to head on into the U.S. to help train this new superhero army. And, and so it, right off the bat, it's like this comic is going to be more of a superhero via military operation. Um, we then get introduced to some characters. Uh, first is Cloud9. Basically, these kids, they, they've got powers. They don't really know what to do with it. And they're getting kind of rounded up by the other heroes, you need a license, you need to do this the right way. Uh, we go through MVP, who's being, um, who's also being recruited. And, and you have this, this idea that these characters aren't just gonna be random, they're actually going to be, um, they're, they're gonna be guided. So the, um, you know, we're, we're meeting new characters. Uh, the Mighty Avengers are fighting the um, Ultimo, and they come into a, a new hero that's made their way on the scene. And so this is an opportunity to introduce a bunch of new faces. And that's what this comic does. So over the course of about 22 pages, we, we meet them. They get to the camp. Uh, they're a lot of our kids. They have no formal training. The, the only thing that's a little bit odd in all this is superheroes like Hank Pym comes in and starts acting like a drill sergeant. And that's just, it's, it's very much not Hank Pym. Now, of course, he's a scroll, so he, he isn't Hank Pym, but they're, there is, in this attempt to make it a military feel book, um, all the characters start acting strange. People like War Machine, people like uh, Gauntlet, it makes sense that they're acting and behaving this way, that that fits them. Uh, people like Hank Pym, and, and there's a few others who come in who just start kind of barking orders, and and uh, it just, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't, it doesn't match. 
uh, kind of who these characters are. So there are some characterization issues, but in general, uh, they're at Camp Hammond, and they are going to uh, be learn, you know, learn how to make be heroes. So we we kind of oversee some training. We see that there's a character MVP who's got you know really you know born to be another Captain America. Got lots of powers, lots of uh, uh, lots of skills, and just just you know really solid. Um, we see She-Hulk in a very strange jumpsuit. I, I'll just throw that in there. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, we we are introduced to these characters: Hardball, Komodo, Trauma, and they've all got kind of very different powers. We're going to figure out how to get them to work uh, with each other. Um, we get you know a, a weird locker room scene, uh, which is fine. And then um, we 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 get basically they go into the danger room where they're all going to learn. And here's where we. Um, get our first indication that this military option, uh, this this thing is is just not well thought through. So uh, we they they have a little battle and there's a giant spider and it you know trauma basically doesn't have great control of his powers and this isn't a great controlled setting. So he he turns into a giant spider. This freaks out um, you know the the character here and she proceeds to fire randomly, blow the arm off of Komodo and uh, also uh, kill MVP, that uh, basically a blast goes right through MVP's head because she's just firing randomly, Cloud9 has, has frozen up, and uh, it's, it's just, it's an exercise gone terribly wrong, and it's, it's, it's every trauma, you know, did the wrong thing, used his powers wrong, uh, this character was bad, there's, there's deaths in the mix, so we immediately get the stakes of this is, um, uh, this is, you know, a broken, problem. Uh, this, this camp was put into Stamford, which was the site of the Civil War explosion. And, you know, now we've got a death on the hands. These characters are clearly not ready for what they're trying to do. This is why, you know, the point being made here is this is why training is important. But uh, Armory, who, who shot and killed MVP, uh, is basically a surgically operate on her to take away her weapon because she, she wasn't ready. And uh, they sent her out. And, um, you know, they, uh, we, they're, they're going to now cover up this death. So the other part is, is that, uh, Guy Rinch, Grinch, um, is basically saying, you know, the, we can't have any negative publicity here. So this, this kid who just died, we're going to, we're going to hide it. We're going to cover up. That's going to put another level of pressure onto these heroes who are just not equipped of how to deal with on any of this. And, um, and so we're, we're automatically setting it out with, you know, there's something rotten at this camp. And uh, now they've got a big secret, and somebody has died. And this, you know, the somebody MVP later comes back uh, reanimated and cloned, uh, which you know because the the scientist that is uh, is helping them is like a, a crazy Nazi um, who's been kind of repatriated and and is also bad. So there's a lot of like there are a lot of factors in here. Um, Dan Slott is trying to to weave a bunch of things in at once. He's trying to talk about how military operations um, have their structure, but also have their flaws. He's trying to talk about how this uh, Superhero Government Registration Act seems like a good idea, but there's a bad side to it. He's trying to introduce a bunch of new faces and kind of deal with the dynamic of people who want to be heroes, but maybe not equipped to be heroes. Um, and and also just kind of the, the, the dynamic of, of people and emotion and everything else. Like I said, there's a lot that is going on here in this issue. Um, this comic, more than some of the others that were launched during the immediate aftermath of Civil War, benefited from, it did tell a solid story. It did make an attempt to really put, um, you know, some real characterization in place and, and try it for the long haul. Um, I do think Dan Slott did a, did a good job for a long time. He eventually, I believe Chris Hills Gage um, ultimately comes in and replaces him. Uh, they start co-writing uh, at one point, and then I think uh, it's just it's just Gage. Uh, but the the title has a nice good run throughout um, both the aftermath of Civil War um, through Dark Reign, where you know some of these characters uh, we get to see some villains, people like the Taskmaster and uh, Bush Bushmaster, uh, Bushwhacker, uh, Bush, <laughs> too many, too many Bush. I'm, I'm now thinking of the guys from the WWE. Um, anyway, we get some really great characterization. We get some nice buildup of Speedball. Uh, we get just a lot of characters really grow through this arc. And there's some, there's some characters that 
um, we come to really appreciate and and like over time. And so it's it's really striking when you read this and you look at some of these. There's some real care put into some of these uh, creatures, some of these characters that would then get kind of flushed away as they went to make you know brand new characters. If you think about today, we had a, a pretty you know wide variety of um, you know ethnicities and genders and other things um, in this team. So it always is a little confusing. And th this team would then kind of segue to Avengers Academy, which introduced yet more new characters that also have really struggled to, you know, again, many of them were killed off. And then uh, some of them were kind of co-opted in their own little ways. But there were a lot of characters being created during this era that that just actually had a lot of promise. So when I read this, this comic, uh, very, very different from an Avengers comic, uh, definitely in all forms, uh, different in terms of how the characters were introduced, the mission, what it means, um, definitely very, just barely an Avengers book. Uh, but it did set the stage for some pretty interesting things in the future and, um, and a lot of potential. I mean, a writer today could probably go back, tap into uh, these characters and, and do quite a bit with them because there was, there was quite a bit of uh, really cool things that, that would come out. Anyway, uh, what did you think about this comic? Uh, did you like it? Did you not like it? Leave me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts on it. Uh, you can like, subscribe, tell a friend. would be most appreciated if you did. Um, otherwise, uh, follow me on Twitter at Comic Perch, and thanks for listening.